and here are some carbon dioxide. And this is a hydrogen sodium lamp. But what if we combine a high intensity discharge lamp or just a discharge lamp with some carbon dioxide? Well, I'm not going to inject carbon dioxide in a high intensity discharge lamp or any discharge lamp for that matter. But today I do want to attempt to make a discharge lamp or we will see what we ever do. But it's just definitely going to be cool and I'm going to make some carbon dioxide plasma. So, Let's do some science. Okay, so carbon dioxide plasma. Wait, what are we actually going to do here? As I said in the intro, I'm not going to inject carbon dioxide in a gas discharge lab because I don't have the space for that. But today we're going to do a carbon dioxide Plasma, and that is actually pretty easy. I'm going to show the cheap way and a little bit more sophisticated way. We're going to use a Tesla coil for the more sophisticated way. So, let's go to my setup and experiment a little bit. Now we are at my setup, and let's actually do the chemistry. So, I'm just going to start with this testing tube over here. And I'm going to move it a little bit here in the back. Now, I'm going to add some baking soda. Just like that. Now, I'm going to pour citric acid in it, and you can see that it actually begins to bubble up pretty well. Here's a close-up view, and it even makes some sound. So, this is just a, the plain old baking soda experiment, but why does this actually happen? I don't know if you really know the science behind it, but it's actually kind of simple. You see, when a carbonate comes in contact with an acid, it will react to carbon dioxide, a gas, water, liquid and a salt which will just dissolve in the water. In the case of baking soda we're going to be left with sodium citrate which is just dissolved in the water. And this reaction is actually true for every carbonate and acid you can choose and mix. Now back to our experiment I'm going to just add even more baking soda to displace the air. And of course, the citric acid the direction. The carbon dioxide should now displace a bit the air. And carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it will remain in this test tube. And here, I have just an arc lighter. So I'm going to put the arc lighter in the test tube. And although there's some glow, although some impurities on the electrode itself make it hard to see. There is actually a little bit of white on the electrode itself, a white glow. I mean now at least you can kind of see something on the electrodes themselves. That was actually the experiment that inspired me to do this, although in real life you can see it much better. So now let's actually get a little bit more serious with this experiment. So I told you about that Tesla coil, yes. Now we're going to add a Tesla coil, which will just be the generator of our plasma, it will just generate the plasma. So here is how I'm going to do a little bit of my setup. It is not going to be that efficient or really that simple, but I'm just to show you how I did it. So I'm going to just need a syringe, a tube, a connector, one of these, and a big syringe. So here is how I anyway I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put the syringe like this. And now I'm going to use one of these which will connect to this as such. But in order to do this and set it correctly up, we need to kind of suspend everything in air. So this is kind of the setup. And also just make sure that the pin of the Tesla coil, the wall where it's going to emit the plasma, is not touching the wall of the syringe. Otherwise it will melt and ruin the experiment. Now you can see that the plasma has its usual color. Now I'm going to let the citric acid wrap the car with the baking powder and let's actually see what happened. Now unfortunately the camera did not really pick up the beautiful bluing, but actually the plasma looks much bluer and is definitely less and smaller in size. But also it kind of looks gay and fuzzy, but it kind of has a little blue hint to it, at least a little bit more bluer than 
what I would normally see. And at the core, I can actually kind of see a little bit of white, although it is outshined by the copper being a little bit melted there, but nevertheless, I can actually see and observe a different color of the plasma that you normally don't really get to see. The reason why I think this experiment, although may not be a really very complicated one and not pretty easy, is really cool. I hope you enjoyed this video and this project. Now, of course, theoretically speaking, I have done a gas discharge lab. Of course, we also have the rest of the gases of the atmosphere, and therefore it is not pure. Also, it is not at the lower pressure. Now, carbon dioxide lab, I have seen some, and they do seem to emit an interesting color, but not really very much different. What I have is still pretty cool, especially since it does look a little bit more to the white, and therefore it does look interesting. Anyway. Thanks for watching, I'm Photonic Rubinism and hope to see you in the next video. Subscribe!